All right, so if you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know that I'm into solar power stuff and lithium batteries, things along those lines. And today I'm gonna to show off a project that I did about three years ago, way back around the same time I was doing the uh, solar generator project, which is one of the oldest videos on my channel right now. But anyway, this is just a solar powered shed, essentially. It's more or less just the lighting system, but I do have a power inverter in here. This was kind of meant to be done on a budget. The whole shed was meant to be kind of done on a budget. And anyway, this is what I came up with to do lighting in the shed without running actual power out here because that would have uh, been pretty expensive because this is quite a ways from the uh, power poles and things. So we'll start out here with the solar panel. I'm not even sure if this is a technically a good deal of a solar panel right now or what it's turned into, what the Harbor Freight ones are like now because I believe that the Harbor Freight ones actually got bumped up power wise, but this is a Renogy panel. And at the time, I think they were about $150 for a 100 watt solar panel, which was a really good deal when everybody was out buying those uh, Harbor Freight ones that were only 45 watts for about the same price. So you can see the specs on the panel there. It is uh, mono crystalline, I believe, 100 watt rated and yeah, that's about all you really need to know about that. So you can see this is on a custom built frame. This is one of the things where it could be mounted on the roof, maybe should be mounted on the roof, but the roof does not point in the right direction. Unfortunately, the uh, sides of the roof are east and west and it needs to point south. So anyway, that's that. The frame is just held in with U-bolts uh, as you can see down here. So if I wanna move these around, you can just kinda wiggle the frame a little bit and these will pop up just fine and those get hit in with a hammer to uh, put it back down. And then of course we've just got the wiring here, MC4 connectors, standard in the solar industry of course, unless you're buying Harbor Freight stuff then those are not MC4 connectors. Uh, but that runs all the way along here. So that kind of runs underneath the door there if you can see that and then up through here and over into this box, which unfortunately right now, this is just a complete mess. It needs to be cleaned up, but we've got the solar charge controller in here. So this is the same solar charge controller that I used on my solar generator project. So that solar charge controller, all the wiring and the solar panel came in a kit, that Renogy kit. I think it's about $180 for that kit at the time. It's probably cheaper now uh, than it is or than it was. Uh, but anyway, that's going into a group size 27. 109 amp hour Everstart marine battery. And all of this stuff is just 14 gauge speaker cable. The only thing you have to be careful with about this is make sure that you buy pure copper speaker cable if you're going to get speaker cable because if it's aluminum, it's not nearly as good. Coming out of the solar charge controller here off of the load connection and I still want to come in here and put real switches inside and out but there's, I'm just pushing the button on the charge controller there to turn the uh, lighting system on. But coming out of that charge controller up by the fake plant, up the windows, you can see where the wiring goes kinda. So you can see in there, those are liquid electrical tape. Well, they're soldered connections and then they have liquid electrical tape over them to insulate them. And there I've got one that goes up this way and there's a couple of lights on the outside I'll show you in a second but all the lights on the inside are these guys. Well, all the lights everywhere are these kind of lights. They are LEDs. If you can see them there, we've got four individual LEDs and they're four watt LEDs. So presumably every one of those is a one watt LED. And throughout the entire building, there are 20 of those. Now inside the building, there are 18, I believe. And then there's two outside. So there's just three of those on every rafter. And you can kind of see there. And then we've got a couple more outside. My giant wasp nest there. Yeah, two more outside. And one of them does not work quite right anymore as you can probably see it flickering there. Now, unfortunately, the one that was flickering was defective from the beginning. Uh, ever since it was new, it flickered like that. but. Anyhow, the only thing that I do have for this system is one of these, also really dirty and probably needs to be cleaned, but 
one of these 750 watt Harbor Freight inverters and this has been doing quite well for the system. I've ran, uh, this has had angle grinders ran off of it, it's had work lighting ran off of it, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, you know, just, just short term stuff that inverters never really plugged in and turned on for extremely long amounts of time off of the system because it is just the one battery of course. And I don't know how old this battery is exactly. I know I got it used, somebody gave it to me. Curious as to what the solar charge controller looks like. Uh, this one's a little bit dirty too, but anyway, this is a Renogy solar charge controller. They are rated for 30 amps, the ones that I got with my kits anyway. And it's a fairly simple one. That's the push button for uh, on and off, and you can set it to do automatic things, of course, as well, like dawn to dusk lighting and all that kind of stuff. Now I'll go ahead and put up some pictures of what that shed looks like lit up at night. Those lights are pretty bright. Now one thing that I would consider using if I was gonna do it today would be LED strip. I just, I don't know if I would really wanna go through with that plan or not because the LED strip, a lot of times it's cheap and the adhesive just kinda sucks on it. So getting it up there might not be too much of an issue. I could 3D print like some U brackets and go over the two by fours or something like that to hold the uh, LED strip up. But also that stuff's not exactly the most reliable form of lighting in the world. So it would probably have to be replaced every few, every few years. Now all the bulbs that are in there are socketed. They have their own sockets, so I can just pull one out and replace it if I decide that I need to do that. And it'd be a pretty easy job. I just have to find a new bulb. So anyway, I just thought I'd show that little project that I did quite a few years ago. I hope it gives someone inspiration on maybe what they can do for shed lighting. If they wanted to do some kind of solar powered shed out in the middle of nowhere or something like that or you want to do what I wanted to do and you know not run power wires all the way out to that shed which would be a pretty expensive thing to have done. But anyway I thought maybe that would give somebody an idea of maybe what they could do with solar power and uh, that's about it for now guys. Bye.